Hello game developers, you are many to like the ultimate event system video and today I present to you another super simple approach and super fast event system. It is brutally simple to use and to understand. In the previous system we had the game event that is a scriptural object so we could create assets from it. And we had the game event listener that we use in the editor extensively. We then reference game events and we raise events. I won't go much more in depth on that. Go watch the video if you want all the details. What was good about this approach was that it is flexible. The same family of objects can easily use different events and publish on them. Now it's also designer friendly, meaning that if you work in a team with others that are not coders, they will be able to create interesting levels without asking for small scripts all the time. On the downside, well, there is a lot of drag and drops in the editor and it can become difficult to track what event is where, what is it doing, and so overall it can become messy if you don't set some rules, use good naming conventions and document your choices. I love the scriptable object approach, but recently, I must say, I wanted something a bit more bulletproof and foolproof. This new system I'm about to show you is 100% in code, no drag and drops, it's centralized, so you have a clear overview of what event exists, and it's also faster. Not necessarily in terms of performance, because I didn't really benchmark it, but in terms of development. On the downside, you are going to need more scripts. The entire thing is stricter and it's centralized, and that last part is both good and bad, it depends. And when I say you need more scripts, it doesn't need it needs more code. The event system itself, it's very little code. It's just that to use the event system, you will just need to always do it by code, obviously. And don't mind me, I'm going straight to the point. I have two methods as well. The first one is, as I said, brutally simple. All right, method one. We define a plain old classic C-sharp class that we make it static called event manager. And then inside we can define unity action. So we, for example, we define our actions for the player that has own health change. Maybe we define actions for monitoring uh, the network if it is connecting or disconnecting. But this can become really difficult to manage and to name. So we will uh, do a small change here. We will put the unity actions in their own classes, for example, player events and then we will use those uh, and define them at the top. So we define them as static read-only, so we don't accidentally change them or reassign them at runtime, and that's it. Now to use this is very simple. Anywhere in our code, so here I have, for example, a player that is just reducing your health uh, over time. So every time that the health changes, I can say event manager dot player dot on health changed dot invoke. So our action that we defined wanted a component and an int, so we can pass this and the health. That's it, that's how you publish an event with this system. Now to listen to an event somewhere else, let's say on the player health UI, on enable, I will say event manager dot player dot on health change, because it's a unity action, we say plus equals update health, which is our method that we want that to receive event on, and on disable, we do minus equals, so we remove this event. And that's it, that's how you publish and listen with this system. It's it's very, very simple. But wait, there is more. And if you enjoyed this first method, please like and subscribe, I would be very grateful to you. All right, method two. This method is a small improvement on the second method. And this method allows us to split the same event type into multiple channels. It's like a grouping technique. So before we had just a simple unity action, the parameters it needs and a name for it. Now we're going to change this. So instead of unity action, we're going to define a unity event. All right, so we have now a class that we call, for example, health event that extends this unity event. Then we define a dictionary where the key is a string, which will be our channel, and the value will be the event. So what this does is that we can now use the same event, but target different groups of listeners. This can be done at runtime, so you don't need to drag and drop things around anymore. You can, at runtime, for example, let's say you have enemies publishing some kind of event, well, you could have all enemies of a certain type published on a certain channel. Maybe you have all the bosses published on a certain channel only for them. And this is effectively moving certain logic closer to the event manager. Sometimes you had the situation where an event is called on your on your class and you have to check, oh, is this event really for me? Is this component something I want to handle? Is the value something I should react on? So you have some 
maybe if else statements or even switch statements in worst case in your method that is reacting to that event. So now with channels, you are moving those, those uh, conditions away and putting them directly as close as possible to the event system. So now when using channels, the method that will receive the event, you can be pretty sure that this method is for you if you use this approach. So once we have a dictionary, we need a method to just get the appropriate event. So this one returns a health event and we give a channel as a parameter that if we don't give it, it's optional. If you just use this method with no channel, so you only use empty string, it will work the same way as the previous method. So here we just, if the channel uh, doesn't exist yet, we add a new channel. And this is why we had to switch to unity action because with unity event, we can just say new unity event. I think it doesn't work with unity action or maybe I did something wrong. Anyway, like this, it's, it works very well. And then we return the event. And the usage is still the same. So now event manager.player.onHealth changed filter because I name it like that for now. And then we can give the filter. And then again, invoke. And then to listen to an event, it's the same. We just get the event. We can give a channel if we want or not. And then instead of plus equals, we do add listener and remove listener because it's a unity event now. All right. 100% encode, no drag and drops. I like this a lot. You might also wonder why not put the event in the player class as a static as well. Well, the reason is that I want every event in one single place. I want to be able to type event manager dot and have a complete overview of everything that exists. That's it. That's what I want. Um, as a solo indie game right now. Anyway, let's move on to the last method. It's method three, but I call it method T. You will understand why. So before we had this, so if you want the channel approach for multiple events, you will have to write multiple times the dictionary and the method associated to it. So this we should basically put in its own class. So the first step is that I'm going to put the dictionary and the method in a new class called generic event, which gives you already a hint of what is happening. Of course, we don't want health event everywhere. We need to tell it later what class we want to use. So for that, we use C-sharp generics. So it works in this way. We say the class generic event of type T, where T is a class. So we don't say which class, we just say it's a class. And we also say that we will use a new keyword. This one is important for later. String is still a string and the value is of type T on both sides. And then the method returns the type T and on line six, we say new class of type T. And this new only works because we define new there, otherwise it doesn't work. So now our play events becomes very simple. We can remove our code and just say generic event of type health event on health changed equals a new generic event. That's it. Every time you want to use this approach, channel approach, uh, you just define it like that. Now to publish, well, now with our new names, it just means we write on health change dot get the filter of the channel if you want and then invoke, still invoke. And that's it. To listen is also the same. You just say the, the event you want, you, you get that event and then you you add your listener and you remove your listener. It's a very, and I really like this. I'm still going to use in some cases uh, the scriptable object approach, but I have to say sometimes with less time available, I need to do more in code or I want to do more in the code so that it's just super explicit. Uh, the scriptable object event approach, I still love it. As I said, I said it many times, but sometimes when I have breaks or a few days or a few weeks, I'm kind of losing track where things are. So I might be using this as a primary way to manage event and use the other approach more like for maybe quick prototyping. That's this. I thank you very much for watching. Go work on your game. I will see you next time.